USA Radio News with Chris Barnes. President-elect Donald Trump officially filling three key positions in his administration, as we hear from correspondent Sarah Jacobs. President-elect Donald Trump is offering the job of Attorney General to Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions. Retired Army Lieutenant General Michael Flynn is Trump's choice to be National Security Advisor, and Trump has reportedly offered the job of CIA Director to Kansas Republican Congressman Mike Pompeo. CNN reporting that Flynn, Pompeo, and Sessions have all accepted the Trump offers. There are also reports that Donald Trump may tap one of his harshest critics in Mitt Romney. Here's USA's Joe Gomez. Trump and Romney will meet this Sunday to discuss the Secretary of State position. Others reportedly under consideration for that position are former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Again, that's Joe Gomez, and you're listening to USA Radio News. President Obama meeting with leaders of Germany, France, Italy, Spain, and the U.K. today. It's a meeting taking place in Berlin. It will be Obama's last visit with those European leaders as president. The White House saying those leaders will discuss the fight against ISIS, the conflicts in Syria and Ukraine, and the refugee crisis. That guy who admitted to destroying Donald Trump's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame could spend years in jail now. The L.A. County District Attorney's Office finally charged James Otis Thursday for taking a sledgehammer and a pickaxe to Trump's star. Otis says he destroyed the star to stand up for the president-elect's alleged sexual assault victims. He says he doesn't mind going to jail because he was standing up for what's right. If Otis is convicted, he could spend up to three years in a cell and face a $10,000 fine. He's due back in court later today. Jason in Campedonia, Los Angeles. After being reported missing back on Tuesday night, authorities say the youngest son of Michigan Congressman John Conyers has been found safe. This is USA Radio News. At least one person dead, six others wounded in a shooting at a children's birthday party in Tennessee last evening. A woman was reportedly killed, a six-year-old child among the wounded. The shooting taking place about 80 miles northwest of Memphis, and police are still looking for one to three people who may be responsible. Perhaps the most famous dress ever worn by Marilyn Monroe has sold for a record price. It's the crystal beaded skin tight gown that the star wore when she sang this. Marilyn Monroe wearing it when she infamously sang Happy Birthday to President John F. Kennedy in 1962, and now it is sold at auction for $4.8 million. The international museum chain Ripley's Believe It or Not purchased it and plans to display the dress at its branch in Hollywood before showing it off at its outlets around the world. It appears Wells Fargo's unauthorized account scandal is cutting into business now. The bank said yesterday new account openings dropped 27% last month. October was the first full month since Wells Fargo admitted millions of accounts were opened without customers' knowledge. Not only were new accounts down from September to October, but account openings were off 44% from October of last year. And a public memorial service is being held in Mount Julia, Tennessee today for singer-songwriter Leon Russell, who died on Sunday. For USA Radio News, I'm Chris Barnes. And away we go. Welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks for hopping on the V-Train this Friday afternoon, 4.30 Eastern Time. I see the gang is all here. Miss Sherry, Mr. Sean. Sean's driving me nuts on Facebook. All right? I'm going to call you out, Sean. I love you, dude. But, man. Woo! He's all over Donald Trump. Damn. Enough with these Facebook posts. Not just you, Sean. Not just you. Everybody. I've had it. I've had it. I've I've had it. It's been about a week and what, two days, two full days? Man didn't even do anything yet. I got a bunch of announcements to make, everybody, I think. 
When is Frank Vetro never in disarray starting a program here? I'm going to try something different today, guys, and I want you to see at the end of the show if it works. If it worked. or See if you noticed anything different about this show. All right? Well, let's see. But anyway, the wall is a fence. The wall. Hey, good fences make good neighbors, Sean. Good fences make good neighbors. Remember that one? All right. So, uh, later on tonight, let's make some announcements. Later on tonight, we have the politics of love. That's what Rebecca Kennedy, that's 9 p.m. That show is off the hook. You guys should do me a favor, tune in. For two reasons, there's about a 75% chance I am going to be on tonight's show. 9 o'clock, the politics of love. I have to do some traveling. I have to run right after this show. If I make it back in time, I will be on the politics of love show. It's a... It's about dating, the dating game, and there's no holds barred. Yes, she's got a beautiful red head, and um, she's going to kill me for this. Big bosoms, and uh, I don't know. She says some dirty things sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> it's a, it shows off the hooks. Off the, off the hooks. Off the hooks? Off the hook. It's off the meat rack, everybody. And uh, I'll be honest. It, tonight's show is about cheating. Cheaters. What is cheating? What is cheating, everybody? Want to start that show a little bit early? I think I do cover that kind of in my uh, in my book. Um, what is cheating? You go to lunch with some uh, one of your friends and you don't tell your significant other? Uh, is that cheating? I don't know. So anyway, no, it's not my girlfriend. Not my girlfriend well, at all. But uh, why don't you guys tune into the show later? Man, I hope I make it back for that show. What is cheaters? What is... What am I... I can't even speak today. What is cheaters? What are cheaters? What is cheating? Anyway, the show's about cheating. So that should be a good one. I can tell you all about cheating from an inside perspective. If you read my book, um, I was involved with... I wasn't cheating. I, I swear to you I wasn't cheating. But I was involved with a lot of women. A lot of women who were cheating. I mean, cheaters. I mean, dating boyfriends, married. Not proud of it. I'm not trying to brag or anything like that. Really, I'm not. And I don't. I don't think I brag about it in my book. But I could. I. I could write a whole another. I could write another book on cheating. All right. I know how. Uh, <laughs> these guys are busted by chops over here. This is great, man. I love these guys. I really do. Uh, for those of you that are just listening, I have to tell you. I know a lot of people. In fact, most people just listen in. If you join the chat room, it's uh, if you can, maybe some of you are working or something like that, but uh, or driving. But these guys bust my chops, man. Yeah, cheating sucks. I never cheated. I swear to you, nobody wants to believe me. I never cheated. Uh, anyway, the politics of love tonight at nine p.m. with Rebecca uh, Kennedy. It's a great show. I I think Sean could probably help me out here. I tell you guys every week that, and basically on every Friday. That's when I, when I make my football picks for the weekend. I always tell you guys if you to quit your job and just to bet on the bet take the San Diego Charger game, bet on that game, the San Diego Charger game. Okay? And bet the opposite of what I do. So if I pick the San Diego Chargers to cover the point spread, pick them not to cover. And if I pick the San Diego Chargers not to cover the point spread, pick them to cover. They will do since I was 15. They will do the opposite. So that's 30, a good 30 years, the opposite of what I picked them to do. And last week was a great example with that knucklehead quarterback. I, what the hell's his name? I don't even want to remember his name. I think I blocked it out for a reason. Uh, thrown an interception, two interceptions late in the game. So um, so it just hit me. as I, I swear to you, as I sat down, actually I just grabbed a pen before the show while the news was running, and I wrote it down. And... Uh, I don't think they're. I don't remember picking them to do anything this week, so I guess they must be off. I would remember if I picked the San Diego Chargers because it just every time I pick them, either way, there's like a knife going in my back. It really, if that's how it feels. So I don't think that they must be off this week because I would remember. Meanwhile, everybody say a prayer for me. See, I have to get all these announcements out, and then I'll start yelling about what everybody's doing to Donald Trump, Sean. Uh I'm going to call it, it's a new holiday. It's going to be called Liberal Saturday. Liberal Saturday. Uh, I 
I have a dinner to go to tomorrow. It's actually a birthday party. And the birthday party is going to be filled with some liberals. And I haven't seen them or heard from them in a long time. And it's going to post-election. You know how people get, well, it's going to be like a fresh wound because I haven't seen them. My family's not liberals. But, well, my immediate family. Then I have, you know, all the other people. So it might get ugly. It's my niece's birthday too. So sorry to my niece, Andrea. We may start fighting. Dishes may be breaking. People will be putting headlocks. It's going to get ugly. Um, everybody, say a prayer for Mary. I want everybody out there, everybody. I know I'm jumping around and it's hard to follow me right now, but if you know the Frank Vetro show and the many other shows on WLINY, you know that we have a, uh, we have a family here. We're a close-knit family. We have a lot of listeners, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of listeners, but then we have these, you know, the more you listen, obviously, the more you become acquainted with us and vice versa, and don't ask any questions, just do it. Do me a favor. Do Frank Vetro a favor. He Listen, I know I have my faults. I help people every day, though. Do me a favor. Help me. Everybody say a quick prayer. for. I don't care if you just have to make the sign of the cross. Just say a quick prayer for Mary. All right? Thank you. All right. Anyway. Anyway, back to it. So Liberal Saturday, I'm going to do battle at this dinner. At this dinner. Then I have to go to my bowling league right after that. Yes, Frank Vetro was an old fart, and he's on a bowling league. Funny shirts and all of that. The bowling league is filled with educators. Now, I'm an educator, but as an educator, 21 years now, I was never a real educator like the rest of them where we're all liberal Democrats. Never really agreed with a lot of educators on anything in life. And before the election, it was October 15th, the third Saturday of October. Our league is the third Saturday of every month. I was there. It was me versus the entire bowling alley. All Hillary supporters, anti-Trump, and it was me. And I was defending Trump, and I wasn't even going to show up if Trump didn't win. In fact, I'm think- I was thinking about not showing up tomorrow because I'm-, I'm tired of the hatred, and I don't want to be yelled at. So, I don't know. It might be a, st- a streaming video on YouTube, or you- if you check the news, it might. you know how you see these people getting beat up that voted for Trump? I swear to you, tomorrow, tomorrow, it might be. 100 people beating up Frank Vetro on the news. So check your news stations. I might get beat up. I, 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 I mean, oh. Wow, Sean wants to get right at it. Sean, I got a couple more announcements. Sean says, okay, let's discuss Donald. I will destroy Obamacare. Now he wants to keep parts of it. This is great. Oh, look at this. I got two screens in front of me. I want to keep parts of it. Now he wants to keep parts of it. Trump said, I will. Mm. Hire a personal prosecutor to put Clinton in jail. Now he wants to work with her. The wall is $56 billion. Oh, my goodness. This thing is jumping. The wall is $56 billion, so now it's a fence. Lie, lie, lie. Love you, bro, but he's lying now. Sean, you're wrong. You're wrong. He's not lying. You don't know. See, you Californians, is that correct to say that? You Californians, you liberals out there. I think you, you, your brain has been shaken by the San Andreas faults over there. All right? And you know I love you too, buddy. But, see, I'm from New York. I'm from New York. Oh, hey. I'm from New York. Listen, he didn't even do anything yet. Let him screw up first. Don't worry about what, don't you, don't you understand by now? Don't worry about what Donald Trump is saying. He's not tr- the traditional guy. See, everybody tries to think they know what Donald Trump is going to do. Didn't you learn in the past? Didn't you learn in the past month and a half what I learned as a kid? Reading about Donald Trump and seeing Donald Trump? Don't worry about it. You know, Donald Trump said he's a negotiator. He's been negotiating his entire... He took over Trump, uh, the Trump uh, family business and renamed it Trump in 1971. He took over his father's business. Okay, he renamed it, and let me tell you, he has gotten things done the entire way. He's even before he took over his, his dad's business, he's been a negotiator. So, what do you do when you negotiate, Sean? When you buy a car, Sean, what do you say? Uh, I'll give you top dollar for it. 
I'll give you full price and then some. Or do you kind of give a lower number than you're willing to pay for? Of course. You do have a right to worry. But now that you started it, Sean, you have to let me finish my point. The man, <laughs> the man's, and I know you're a reasonable person. I know you just like to get under my skin. But now I got to make my point, damn it. So he's a negotiator. I'm going to kick everybody out. I'm going to do this. Gonna, he, he talks in extremes. And everybody's response is supposed to be, instead of saying, oh, my God, he's this, he's that. It's supposed to be, okay, counter. You have to, learn, you have to know about Trump. Counter offer. Give him a, he, he expects you to counter. Oh, I'm not kicking everybody out? Okay, counter me. And then he negotiates. It's the art of the deal. And here's a little known thing. I read The Art of the Deal uh, many, many years ago. That's one of his books. And I believe that was the one. I, I read a lot of it. Not all of them, but a lot of his books. In one of his books, and it sheds a little light into Donald Trump and how he thinks. And, and listen to this, everybody. Because he's not the man you think he is. Donald Trump said, I'm going to paraphrase, in one of his books, the more I moved up the corporate ladder, the more he advanced in status, the more I move up the corporate ladder, the more I served. You understand that? Think about that. The more I move up the corporate ladder, the more I serve. It's not about him being a dictator. It's about him working with people, for people. He serves the people. Give that guy a chance. Let me tell you, he's not doing things in a traditional way. And I was going to get back to that a little bit later. Um, listen, here's, here's something I want to announce to you guys. And then uh, that should be the end of uh, today's announcements. Uh, so let me click this screen off and let me go to this. Dr. Carlos Rivera. Everybody knows that Dr. Carlos Rivera and he has that show in the best interest of the kids. What a great guy who's being run. I mean, you want to talk about being raked over the coals? They're having a contest. Support Dr. Carlos' show with your story in the best interest of the children. Writer's Raffle, tell your story. You're going to support the Dr. Carlos show, and here's what you have to do. Write a true experience about a divorce or separation in which the family or Supreme Courts or ex-partner have been unjust and thus alienated you from your children or inflicted financial harm. So the Dr. Carlos show is going to find those that have been treated unfairly by the system and the desire to spread hope to those that are going through the pain and more importantly to provide positive feedback for change. How can you help? For each story submitted, L-I-R-E-I-A, that's all capital letters, will sponsor a radio show, radio of Dr. Carlos in the best interest of the children. Additionally, each valid submission will be entered into a drawing for three prizes as well as reviewed to be published either in a book or a blog. Grand prize, three nights. Hey, here, here's what we're all getting to, right? Submit your story, and you can win three nights at Wyndham Resorts in Newport Beach, Rhode Island. What they don't tell you is you have to share the bed with Frank Vetro. No, I'm kidding. First prize, $200 Visa gift card, and second is a $100 Amazon gift card. All right. Man, my chat room is ooh, they're going at it. Clinton and, 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 and Donald Trump. So there's your little raffle. Let me, just, let me just give you the deadline, and then we'll be on our way. Is there a deadline listed? No deadline. I'll get that deadline to you because I don't see a deadline here. All right. So, guys, you know how screwed up I am? You have a story, Sherry? Submit it. Send it in. Send it to me, and I'll send it along. Or send it right to Eric, of course. All right. You know, speaking about not everybody being for Clinton, now I'm jumping around. You guys, Man, you guys are dictating my show right now. The hell's going on? We we'll have to call this uh, Frank Vetro and uh, and family. Frank Vetro and friends. So, speaking of that, I'm tired of reading about. In fact, somebody did say something. Let me read it off. Let me just read this off. Where is it? Do I have it here? Of course, I don't have it here. Oh yeah, somebody wrote. Somebody wrote. Paul Ryan is mathematically challenged when he talks about. A mandate. Donald Trump lost the popular vote. This is Scott Diamond of Levittown, New York. Donald Trump lost the popular vote. Trump was elected because he pandered to this guy, to the disaffected in the Rust Belt. And this block of voters managed to take enough states to win the Electoral College. This is hardly a mandate. Trump and the rest of the Republicans need to understand that Trump didn't win this election, but that Hillary Clinton lost it. Ryan and the Republicans need to work toward compromise that will unify not for, you know, shut up, Scott. Uh, you know what? Shut up, Scott. Here's, listen, 
Everybody out there, for the last time with this electoral college versus the popular vote, let me explain something to you. If I'm playing a baseball game, okay, and my team gets 20 hits, follow this, everybody. My team gets 20 hits, all singles, and they're scattered throughout the game. Nine innings, and I'm scattering 20 hits. Score a couple of runs. And I go against a team that only gets eight hits. But six of those hits are home runs, and I lose. I got more hits. Way more hits. Three times as many hits. But I lost the game. It's not whoever gets the most hits. It's whoever scores the most runs. That's the rules of baseball. You understand what I'm talking about? If it's a football game, I could throw more passing yards. I could, ple- I could complete more passes. I could run for more yards. I could do everything more or fa- offensively. But I could lose the game. It happens quite a bit, actually. The score of the game is what matters, win or lose. You can do more and lose. It happens. Everybody knows the rules. That's the Constitution of the United States of America. Don't dismiss it. It's the Electoral College. That's how it's always been. And that is what they knew entering the race. I got news to you, Scott and everybody else. Hillary Clinton lost. Deal with it or else go play in traffic. We don't want to hear from you. I am tired of the protest. I'm tired of all of it. Go away. She lost. You have a president that's coming in in about 60 some odd days. His name is Donald Trump. Get ready or get run over. All these protesters. How many people out there besides me think it should be a law? You want to protest finding good. Listen, when I was a teacher, first year teacher, no, second year teacher, second year teacher, uh, I was picketing. I protested. It was a contract thing, negotiations, and I was protesting. But guess what? I protested not during my work day. I protested outside my work day. And me and the group of the teachers, we stood on the side. We didn't scream things. We held up signs. We didn't stop traffic. We didn't badmouth anybody that we were negotiating against. We didn't curse them out. It was nothing like that. It was a civil protest. You want to protest? Go right ahead. Be a bunch of idiots. But if you're stopping traffic, if you're being violent, if you're ruining anything, some type of vandalism, anything, mandatory, one year in prison, I'm not kidding, in jail, I'm not kidding. I really believe that. I am tired of this. I am tired of these jerks. And yeah, why are these celebs? Exactly, Sean. Now you're thinking, Sean, why are these celebrities still in the United States of America? The money's too good, isn't it? Oh, that capitalism. We love that capitalism, don't we? We made tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars here. And then we threatened to leave because our guy Bernie, the socialist, didn't get voted in. He's a socialist. You're not making $100 million with a socialist in charge. Socialism didn't work. That's why people came to America from Europe. It didn't work, everybody. My God. No, we don't have to worry about them. They don't vote anyway. People don't even vote. Oh, God. You want to hear something funny? The other day, I actually met, I met somebody on, was it Monday? On Monday, I met somebody leaving this show. I ran into somebody. I went to, uh, I went to the, the store and I'm running, I'm talking to somebody, this, that, the other thing. And I swear to you, I met up with her and then I met her again and I, uh, at Starbucks where I live. This is, this is, this is great. This is how my life is. So I meet up with her. And I'm talking, a nice, nice, nice young lady. And we're talking, and oh, it looks kind of pretty and this and that. And uh, she says that when we're done with the coffee, I went to work, and she was going to go buy, she's going to go to Barnes & Nobles, not to buy my book. She was going to go to Barnes & Nobles, I'm not kidding, to buy Amy Schumer's book and Bernie Sanders' book. Now, for those of you that know me, listen to me long enough. How many of you out there think that I want to talk to that woman ever again? You think I want to be involved with somebody interested in reading Amy Schumer's book? Bernie Sanders? Are you out of your mind? 
Take care. Brush your hair. Peace and hair grease. I am out. I told her to get lost somewhere. No, I did not. But that was the end of that crap. Does that make me a hater? Can you be a hater? My guy won. I don't know. I'm not sure. But, uh... Is it time for break yet? Oh, my God. It's 4.56? Man, you guys do me for a loop. It's already 4.56. All right. When I get back... When I get back, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to talk about all these people. Donald Trump, the transition team. Everybody knows everything, everybody. Sean, everybody knows everything, right? Well, when we get back, we'll just show you how everybody knows absolutely nothing. But I got to pay a couple of bills. You know what? I think we'll start with Phil Giacino. You guys ever heard of that guy? Phil Giacino. Um, listen to the Frank Retro Show every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right here. W L I N Y. Long Island's number one. It's actually the United States' number one internet radio station. Radio and TV. All right. Anyway, when we get back, a little more politics, more politics, and some uh, criminal justice, of course, because I am Frank Vetro, the man who fights corruption. Back after this. Do not go anywhere. What were you thinking? I only had a few drinks. And then drove home, really? Look, I'm sorry. Not as sorry as you're going to be. Okay, so now what? I guess we get you a lawyer. Great. You know how I feel about lawyers. Listen, Kelly's husband used Phil Giacino and Associates. She said he was fair, honest, and made sure that Jim had the legal representation he needed. I don't know. Listen, Kelly said Phil Giacino is an ex-Suffolk County assistant district attorney with over 24 years in practice. (laughs) Really? Practice? Couldn't get it right the first time? You're joking. Facing fines, losing your license, and even jail, and you're joking. You're right. What's Phil Giacino's number? Smart man. Let me look at my phone. Okay, 631-588-3155. Tell me again. 631-588-3155. Where's his office? 2780 Middle Country Road, Suite 208 in Lake Grove. Oh, right over by the Good Steer. Yes, great place for your last meal if you don't get Phil on the phone. Mistakes happen. When they do, you want an attorney you can trust. Philip J. Giacino is that attorney. Give Phil a call at 631-588-3155. That's 631-588-3155. Or check out his website at www.jacinolaw.com. What did Phil say? Told me not to worry. Got an appointment with him for tomorrow afternoon. Good. Now I'll get this little honey-do list for you. A little community service. Maybe I should call my lawyer. Still joking? Give me the list. Hey, I got a special message out there for everybody that's dealing with car insurance because you see you can reduce the cost of your car insurance by 10 percent by taking the defensive driving course offered by platinum coverage not only that but you can reduce points off your license and here's the other good news not only can you do it at platinum coverage but you can do it live online so no matter where you are or what time of day it is or whatever is going on in your life, you can take the defensive driving course that's offered by Platinum Coverage and you can reduce the points on your license if you have points on your license and you can save money on your insurance up to 10%. This is good for all of the drivers in your house. We do it in our house Trust me, my wife's the one that stands there with coupons for 35 cents and has me out there in the rain putting cans in the machine to get the nickels back. So if you got that and you want to save money, especially on car insurance, because let's face it, car insurance can be a hefty sum in today's world, and you want to reduce that by 10%, you could do it. Call Platinum Coverage today at 631-707-9900. That's 631-707-9900. Platinum Coverage for defensive driving. It just doesn't get any better better than that all right real quick tammy don't worry they i don't know what they're talking about impeaching trump get him out of here he's going nowhere there's no way he's going anywhere he didn't even do anything yet and they can't they can vote all they want he's the president he's gonna stay the president he's never broken a law unlike somebody what's her name i just can't remember her name right now and i don't want to remember her name go away all right we're not done though i just wanted to chime in real quick let's look a little holligan capital group Hey guys, it's Eric from Cop and Calamity in the morning. Let me talk to you for just a second about Harlequin Capital Corp. See, when you're shopping for a mortgage for either buying a home or refinancing your home, you don't want to deal with a company that's going to string you along day after day only to find out when it's all the dust settles and you hit that closing table that what they promise is not what's there. Nope, that's not Harlequin Capital Corp. See, they have integrity in closing. They know the mortgage business. They know their products and they know what they have to do to ensure that you get the best mortgage at the best rate 
and a rate you can afford. They know their stuff. Harlequin Capital Corp, 888-815-1120, 888-815-1120. One more time, 888-815-1120. Call Harlequin Capital Corp for all of your mortgage and refinancing needs today. They know their business, and that's what you need to know. Harlequin Capital Corp, 888-815-1120, 888-815-1120. Give them a call today. That's right. The media, they sure did know how to, first of all, they put me down and they knew how to kick me when I was down. Dirty Laundry. That song gets played for the past, I think, all week. That's because I've been badgered by a listener. I won't mention who it is. Let's play it. You guys want me to play another song? I'll play another song. But right now, a little Dirty Laundry. That's Don Henley. All right. So, um, yeah, the, it, it's, uh, the media, the media is... Uh, Everybody's saying, you know, it's the, it's the fall of the media. People still listen to the media, though. But that mainstream media, yeah. And I've been saying, I've been saying, you know, today on social media, and I think for the past week now, this is nothing new. I was, people told me I was a nut job back in 2006. In February 2006, I actually, see, my book, I'm not trying to plug my book right now, but my book, Staying on Principle, is written in a, as a journal. It's in journal format. So on certain, certain, I got the date and the time and everything, the date, the month, all that, the year. Um, and then I start writing. It's a journal. So day by day, I write things. And in February 2006, I wrote what the media do. They did it to me. How they lie, one-sided stories, and everybody believes them. Everybody believed what the media was saying about me. Um, made national news, and I, I lost everything because of it. I wrote about it in February 2006. In fact, it's my book, page 64 to 67. In February 2006, I wrote about it. And I wrote about it again, page 162 and 167, in April in 2008, because they re- the media for four years kept ripping me apart. Four years. Okay, so let me tell you something right now. All this, oh, the media is dead, and the media, the media should have been dead a long time ago. I've been, I've been calling for a change in the First Amendment for ten years now, because I know there's some big wig radio and TV hosts that are saying, oh, I've been saying this since you know 2009. Some part, some, I heard one guy who I really like a lot actually say, I, I've said this since 2008. Well, I got you beat, pal, and I got proof of it in my book, February 2006. I've been saying I've been saying that that the uh, First Amendment should be revisited and the way the media acts and behaves off the charts wrong. So uh, anyway, everybody's about ten years late. I was nuts. Well, for those of you that didn't want to listen to me, apology accepted. I think, but I was destroyed because of it. All right, let me get to some of these. A uh, lot of comments going on here in the chat room. What is going on? Forty percent of the eligible did not vote. Yeah, I believe that. So half the country did not vote. I, I definitely believe that. I definitely believe that. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? The people are protesting are being paid. Yeah, the pro. There are paid protesters. You are correct, Sean. There are paid protesters. Not even they're getting shipped in. Not they're not even from the area half the time. What else we got? Flag burners. Yeah. 
How many protesters are actually waving flags? If you see a flag, that means they're burning it. In jail. I'm tired of it. In jail. How come? Here's what I want to know. How come Donald Trump, I mean Donald Trump, how come President Obama, Hillary Clinton, Bernie, all these people, how come they are not coming out to condemn these people? Why is that not happening? That's what I'd like to know. So, uh, Frank, I want you to answer this. Uh Uh-oh. All right, I'm answering it. Trump said at a rally, oh, my God, this is the most stress I have ever felt. He will not not have his kids to help solve problems. You have the rednecks, the militia, all the Second Amendment lovers. How will he bring America together? Race war, the violence. It's not Trump that's causing the violence. It's not Trump that's causing the race. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, I'll go even further. The media is is winning again, Sean. It's the media. It's called divide and conquer. If you have a divided America, you can you can rule them easier, right? United we stand, divided we fall. We are divided because that's what the powers at B want. They want us divided. There, I'm not saying there's never any racial uh, tensions. Of course, racism exists. No duh, we know that. Okay. However, however. What we here's how he can here, you know how Sean here's how okay since you're not blaming Trump jobs create jobs put these people these downtrodden areas to work it's not as much racial I've been saying this forever it's not so much racial the divide as it is socioeconomic how many multimillionaire minorities are rioting. Getting into confrontation with police. Protesting. Huh? You, you see Michael Jordan, Dr. Ben Carson, and who, any, any, anybody. Any successful, financially at least successful minority having problems? It's money. It's money every time, twice on Sundays. I'm telling you right now. It's more that, yes, racism exists. I get it. But it's more money. These areas... These, these, these Democratic-run cities where the education is shot, I mean, down the tubes, Detroit, Cleveland, Chicago, downtrodden areas, Baltimore, all right? They, there's no jobs. The communities are shot. Everybody's got some kind of, so, uh, not everybody, but some, you know, large percentage on some type of social welfare. They're all dependent. That's the problem. Let's get them some money. Let's get them. Let, let's teach them. Let's educate these people. Let's educate everybody. Let's not make everybody so dependent so they get some self-esteem. Now they're educated. They have some self-esteem. They're earning. Not that everybody can be millionaires, but they're earning something. They're earning their own keep. There's some responsibility. You'd be amazed what it does to somebody's self-esteem. Um, level of self-worth. There, I'm telling you right now, there would be less of a divide. It's ignorance that's causing this. And the media and the Democrats play on this. They want everybody down. They keep these areas down because they want everybody to think, oh, it's racial, white against black, this, that. Remember what I always say, it's, they're like ninjas. They make everybody get sidetracked from the real issue. Educate them, create jobs. Donald Trump can do that. And if he does, it will help unite America. I believe that. Money solves a lot of problems. I don't want to hear it. And the lack of money causes a lot of problems. That's a fact. I believe that. Anyway. Speaking of the... uh, the divide amongst our uh, country and everybody falling victim to it. Uh, Stephen Hawking is a little bit, uh, you know, at a Cambridge professor. He was speaking at Oxford University. He's a little more optimistic. He gives the human species, unless we move to another planet, he gives them 1,000 more years. That's us. He gives us a thousand. I mean, obviously we'll be long gone, but he says we need a 1,000 years 
if we don't find another planet to live on, we are done um, as a species. Since I've been on air, I've been saying when I first I first said it was 40 years and then we're done the way we're going, at least as a nation, maybe not a species, but a nation. Uh, we're down to 38. We need change. I'm telling you right now. What do we got here? Sean, yes, Frank, he wants to unite America and make America great, but it's so sad the country's a mess. Hey, Sean, I think the country's still the greatest country around. I believe that, but it is in disarray. It is severely broken. And I think whoever the president was, Donald Trump, somebody else, I don't know. How much can you get done? It's kind of like being in a 12-foot hole. You know, take Frank Vetro. My life was in complete disarray. Take just my life. I was in complete disarray. I was unemployed for four years. I was in my car. The debt that I mounted up, I mean, just, I mean, God, just, I, I was just in such a hole. It took forever for me to get back on the right track. I mean, I was moving forward. I was doing all the right things, but, but it take, it took time. I had to get out of my hole, the debt, the, everything that was going on in my life, all the negatives. I, it took years just to get out and hit level ground. And then I could start moving forward. You know what I'm saying? It, I mean, whoever takes over the president has to clean up. You can't move forward until you clean up. Right? How do you move forward? You got to gut your garage first and then start organizing. You can't organize when there's garbage all over the place. You have to gut everything. Donald Trump and whoever, if it wasn't him, it would have been somebody's, somebody else. He has to gut everything and start new. Is four years enough? I don't know. I don't know if problems will be solved. The trick is to get rid of the junk first, right? Before your wound heals, you clean it out. Clean the wound, and then it heals properly. Donald Trump's job is to get things going on the right track, clean it, clean everything up, and then we can move forward. Is four years enough? Maybe he could just start moving forward, and whoever takes over, unless it's him for another four years afterwards. But it's going to take more than one four-year stint. That's It, it, it has to. This country is broken. It is going the wrong way fast. And anybody that doesn't think so is looking through life with rose-colored glasses. No question about it. It's going to take time. I agree. A lot of time. And Donald Trump ain't, is not doing it in four years. Nobody can do it in four years. You could set the ship sailing in the right direction, perhaps. But it won't be fixed. No way. Especially the way he has so much resistance. It's, uh, it's crazy. The resistance is off the charts crazy. No doubt about it. Um, what do we got? It's 514 already? My goodness. So how about Trump's uh, transition team, whatever they want to call it? Everybody knows everything. Everybody's saying, oh, he should be hiring this one. He should be doing this. Let's face it, everybody. What the hell does anybody know about what Donald Trump is thinking? And how, what Donald Trump should do. All of these experts and all of these know-it-alls, they, you know, they can't be wrong enough. It's like if they don't have any pride. It bounces right off them. Then they just go to the next. Yeah, I've been wrong the whole time. Now let me tell Donald Trump what he should do regarding his transition team and all this other stuff. You know what? You guys don't know. You don't know. Everybody, he should hire this one. What's he doing with this one? Now this one's going to visit him. Are you kidding me? Just sit. Why doesn't why doesn't everybody just sit and they're comparing? Oh, in the prior years, this many people were hired already within one week, and this many people, and Donald Trump is not on pace, and he is on pace, and he's in disarray. Nobody knows what's going on. Love you too, Sean. Hey, Sean, buddy, you have a great weekend, all right? Peace. I'll see you next time. I'll see you Monday, 4.30. Be good, pal. All right. Uh, nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going on. You don't know what. This is Donald Trump. He knows what he's doing. I think he knows how to hire people. It's not a tradition. He didn't win the presidential uh, uh, can. He didn't win the presidential election in the traditional manner. He's not a traditional candidate. He's not a traditional president. But he's a capable man. Why doesn't everybody just learn their lesson? Sit back. You know you're not going to change his mind. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. Let him do it. Don't start criticizing. Let him do something first. Everybody, can you name this guy? Can you name this guy? Ready? Quote, here's what I know. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are, wor- 
are, are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. He's playing the members of the American public for suckers. He gets a free ride to the White House, and all we get is a lousy hat. Dishonesty is Trump's hallmark. He claimed that he had spoken clearly and boldly against going into Iraq. Wrong. He spoke in favor of invading Iraq. He said he saw thousands of Muslims in New Jersey celebrating 9-11. Wrong. He saw no such thing. He imagined it. You know who that is? Anybody? Anybody? Well, Trump responded to this man by saying, I called him a choke artist, and it's true. Anybody know who the ultimate choke artist was, is? That's Mitt Romney. So Mitt Romney, all of these, and I'm not buying this stuff. I don't, this whole keep your friends close, enemies close. I hope Donald Trump doesn't hire this man. I don't know how this guy is going to see Donald Trump. Like you said, and this man, think of all the things. Forget about the quote I just read to you. Think about all the things that this man said and did and tried to do to not have Trump elected. Talk about an enemy. And this whole drain the swamp thing, I don't want Trump hiring this guy. I'm going to tell you right now. This whole, well, he could be good at this. He could be, listen, there's a lot of people that could be good at it. You don't need Mitt Romney in order to succeed at whatever you want to hire. I don't care what you're looking to maybe hire him for or what he's going to talk to you about. You don't need him. He didn't want you in there in the worst way possible. And you know what? We don't want him. Don't do it, Mr. Trump. Please don't do it. This whole turn the other cheek, or like, I'm not into this. You can't just wipe away everything that was said. This guy didn't just say the words. He tried everything not to have you there. I don't, I don't like to keep your friends close, your enemies closer. No good. Not in this instance. Get rid- And how does this guy have to say all that? What's he going to walk into the, uh, and meet up with Trump with his tail between his legs? Uh, Mr. Trump. Everything I did, it wasn't one, two, three, four, ten things. All 25 things I've done and said against you, the evil things that spewed out of my mouth, I didn't mean any of them. Like, you don't take that. You can't take that back. What is this? How does this man even look Trump in the eye? Unless Trump with his ego likes seeing these people squabble, right? Like crawl on their hands and knees to him, which probably he does. Maybe that's what he's doing. Please don't hire him. You don't need this. You don't. We don't need Mitt Romney. I don't care. We please, God Almighty, just do it right. Just gut everything. Get rid of him. He's good at this. He's good at that. Yeah, every politician is good at everything. When has a politician ever said, "Oh, I stink at this," or "I failed at this," or "I could do this better"? My fault is this. They're always the greatest. They've always done a million great things. Every politician has, hear them speak about themselves. They've always done everything great. Then why is our country the way it is? If everything's always so great, they never mess up. We don't need Mitt Romney. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. All right, guys, I have to take a break. I have to take a quick break again. And I will be back. Uh, yeah, I will be back. But we have to get a little platinum coverage in here. Frank Vetchel Show every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Right here on WLINY. Thanks for hopping on the V-Train. Next stop is Justice. And I'll take you there. Hey, I got a special message out there for everybody that's dealing with car insurance. Because, you see, you can reduce the cost of your car insurance by 10% by taking the defensive driving course offered by Platinum Coverage. Not only that, but you can reduce points off your license. And here's the other good news. Not only can you do it at Platinum Coverage, but you can do it live online. So no matter where you are or what time of day it is or whatever is going on in your life, you can take the defensive driving course that's offered by Platinum Coverage and you can reduce the points on your license if you have points on your license and you can save money on your insurance up to 10%. This is good for all of the drivers in your house. We do it in our house. Trust me, my wife's the one that stands there with coupons for 35 cents and has me out there in the rain putting cans in the machine to get the nickels back. So if you got that and you want to save money, especially on car insurance, because 
let's face it, car insurance can be a hefty sum in today's world. And you want to reduce that by 10%, you could do it. Call Platinum Coverage today at 631-707-9900. That's 631-707-9900. Platinum Coverage for defensive driving. It just doesn't get any better than that. You know well, I'm a chicken fry. Go beer on a Friday night. A pair of jeans that fit just right. And a radio up, up. a lot to see the sunrise. See the love in my woman's eyes. Feel the touch of a precious child. No mother's love. Well, I was raised up beneath the shade of a Georgia pine And that's home, you know With sweet tea, pecan pie, and homemade wine Where the peaches grow And my house, it's not much to talk about But it's filled with love that's grown in southern ground And a little bit of chicken pie Go beer on a Friday night A pair of jeans that fit just right and the radio oh, 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 oh. A lot of sea songs See the love in a woman's eyes Be the touch of a precious child No mother's love Boy, did I want to hear more of that song But, you know, there's just no time in the show Maybe there's a little more time Fooled ya Really don't it's have time. funny how it's the simple things in life that mean the most. Not where you live, what you drive, or the price tag on your clothes. Yes, there's no it. sign on a piece of mind. This I've come to know. So if you agree, have a drink with me. Raise your glasses for a toast to a little, little bit, bit of chicken fried. Go beer on a Friday night. A pair of jeans that fit just right. And a radio. All right, that's it for real this time. But let's see what we got here. How about, uh, I tell you, these attorneys, $937.50 an hour. $937.50 an hour. That's what us New York taxpayers are paying because Governor Cuomo, not a big, I am not a big fan of him, is in a little bit of trouble is in a little bit of trouble with the uh, attorney general, uh, the uh, attorney for the uh, Prepahara, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District. He's investigating them on the Buffalo Billions Project, and his office, not necessarily Cuomo, not yet at least, but his office has a has a bill with their attorneys for nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. Boy, it must be nice to be one of those attorneys. Damn. $937.50 an hour, and we are paying for it. Congratulations. They screw up. They go to jail. They're guilty, but we pay the attorney fees. There's, this has to be a better way. That should be part of their punishment if they're found guilty. They have to pay the attorney. You know what? That's it. I just thought of it. That should be part of their punishment. All you judges out there, this is what should happen as part of their punishment. You, Mr. and Mrs. Politician, who screwed up and had attorneys defending you on the taxpayer dime at $937.50 an hour at a bill of $950,000? No, you pay that bill. You screw up and we have to pay for that? You must be out of your goddamn mind. Oh, God. Now, somebody keeps messaging me, uh, giving me, sending me emails and private messages regarding um, doing a show on police chief, former police chief, um, James Burke. I did a show. I did a million shows on James Burke. Yes, he's in federal holding right now. He's actually appealing his sentence, uh, if you're listening right now. Um, I can't talk about him right now, but, yeah, the most corrupt guy in Suffolk County, the most corrupt guy in, well, Hillary Clinton's the most corrupt, but... This guy, this guy, Burke, is right behind him. Um, he's involved with a lot of stuff regarding the Suffolk County Police Department. In fact, I linked him somehow to my case that I'm fighting. 
and he's very corrupt and he would beat you to a pulp in fact that's what he got busted for beating a beating up somebody while they were in holding and then he orchestrated a cover-up and then it was found out that he's in on a lot of other stuff it's an ongoing fbi investigation i wish the fbi would listen to me a little bit more uh or this show maybe they are but um i have some stuff on burke um, I have some evidence, Burke and Thomas Spoda, but now's not the time. He's appealing his sentence. I don't know why. Just go to jail, go away, go to prison. He is corrupt. I'm sorry for, to the person. If you missed my show, we can get Eric. Why don't you write the station? Send the station an email. Send Eric an email. He'll get you a copy of the shows. Um, but, you know, speaking of criminal justice, how about this? Freaking Missouri. You know, Hulk Hogan has a sex video like nine seconds like nine seconds worth of a sex video that was put out. And he was awarded like over $100 million or something like that. Who's that sportscaster who was some peep and Tom took pitch of us? She got like 30 something million dollars, right? Something like that. Well, in Missouri, you go to jail, you go to prison, and you get $18,000 if you're exonerated. For every, it winds up being $50 a day. $50 a day if you're exonerated in Missouri. $18,000 a year. That's it. That's all you get. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, develop this story a little bit more on Monday because I'm out of time right now. I always say this. I need more time. But, uh, yeah, the criminal justice system, let me tell you, it is off the hook. I, I still have to speak about education, too. I have a lot of stuff to talk about with education. But uh, I tell you, that's all right. There's always another day, right, everybody? Maybe the show should be more days a week. But, yeah, Missouri and a lot of other states, if you get thrown in jail, murder, 30 years, think about it. You're in jail for 30 years, wrongfully convicted. You get out. You wind up with, let's see, 30 times 20 would be uh, $600,000. So you wind up with not even, like, what, $550,000? That's it? That's it. For being locked up, for being locked up for 30 years in prison, you're going to walk out with not even five, with not even $600,000 at the end of the day. 50 bucks a day you get for having your life totally taken from you. 30 years. That's how. That's what it winds up with in Missouri. I think Texas is the highest. I don't have it in front of me, but I think Texas is the highest. They get 80000 a year. Still way short. And who gets punished on the other end of it for purposefully messing up? We'll talk a little bit about that more on Monday. Uh, I want to, uh, before I leave, reiterate, Politics of Love, 9 p.m., Rebecca Kennedy... Okay, I'm going to try to be there. So what is that in about 5.30 right now? Three and a half hours. I think I could leave and get back in time. Tune us in. Um, can't promise you, but I'm trying to get to the show. It's about cheaters. Cheating on your significant other. That sucks, doesn't it? But it happens. And I am going to put my two cents into that conversation. But I could be attacked by a couple of women. So uh, somebody's got to be here to witness it. You guys have to watch in case I get attacked so you can witness it. I need witnesses. What's another lawsuit, right? All right, everybody. If you don't, though, and if I don't make it back, you have a great weekend. Tune into the show, though. Politics of Love, 9 p.m. Rebecca Kennedy. Cheaters. I'm Frank Vetro. You've been listening to the Frank Vetro Show. Thanks for hopping on the V train. Uh, you can catch me at Frank Vetro, Twitter, Facebook. Go to my website, Frank Vetro, V E T R O, FrankVetro.com. Email me, message me. Somebody messaged me before. I'm meeting up with them. They actually live right near me. They want me to sign a book. Why not? How many people out there think I'm going to be, uh, I can't say assassinated. I'm really not so famous, but uh, you think I'm being set up? Somebody said they bought a book and they want to want me to, <laughs> what do you call it, inscribe it for their mother. I hope I'm not being called to a setup. Well, if you don't see me tonight or on Monday, maybe this is the last you're seeing me, everybody. Who knows? Hope not. You guys have a great weekend. I'll try to. All right, take care. Brush your hair. Once you go out the rails of a crazy train, be good, folks.